these are well-educated men and women. When the employer is looking for somebody with an education that meets their needs, you'll find them in, around the ranks of those who are blind, vision impaired. If you're talking about people with work ethic, ask the Department of Labor. You'll find that when you're talking about job retention, having to retrain people because they keep changing jobs, that's not what you're gonna find in the disability community. We have a high level of job retention. I'm a perfect example of that. I came here as a part-time temporary substitute teacher 30 years ago. Now, I'm here to show you technology, and I, I am going to do that. I'm going to talk about the different parts of it as I go through that process. I came up here with one piece of technology firmly in my hand. This is called the refreshable Braille display. It can connect either by Bluetooth or by USB to a number of different devices. I use this on my desk interact with my Mac PowerBook Pro. I use this on my desk to work with this laptop, which is my Windows 8.1 based system. I use it when I'm on the road using my Windows Surface 3 uh, laptop slash tablet. I use it to interact with that phone that I pulled out of my pocket to set alarm for myself. So this device can do all of those things and it does it through a 40 character display of electromechanical dots and giving me the alternative as a way to read what's on the screen, but also an alternative keyboard to interact with that screen information. This can be provided to an employee who is a braille reader to access their work, to a blind person who's going through a training programs such as college or university program in order for them to be able to access that. If you're working in the field of accounting, uh, you might want your employee to know whether two is T-O, T-W-U-O, T-O-O, T-U-E, all of those say two. Mm -hmm. So with Braille, you get that exactness of knowing exactly what it is you're supposed to be understanding. I'm going to set that up here, and I'm going to be very careful, because of all the things I'm showing you, that's the most expensive. Mm -hmm. To get access in Braille today to devices that device is $3,000. So it costs twice the price, or sometimes three or four times the price that the computer is accessing. You as an employer don't have to worry about that at the, at the get-go. We'll find ways for you to get access to that for your employee to start with. All right, I'm now turning to my Windows-based computer and double check where I am because there have been a lot of people messing around up here. <laughs> and, uh, you might see it up on the big screen, but I've got to have proof of the pudding here. So I'm going to do a keystroke that will tell me the title. I'm just desktop. And it says that I'm at my desktop. The voice you're hearing, the voice actually is called eloquence, but the program sending the information from the screen to the voice is called JOB. It stands for Job Access with Speech. And these screen readers take whatever's happening on the screen and send it through the speech synthesizer or sound card that's in your computer and then reads it aloud to me. I can control many aspects of it, so I'm going to leave the desktop. Hold tab, free of micro left there, dislike there. List new college project, left arm left, free of shift tab, dismiss all buttons. I'm going to dismiss this pop-up that told me about the appointments I missed. I didn't, I was just in the other room. Hold tab, inbox dash Google next, dash line, punch on to the care of Google, dash on Google, inbox dash Google next. This is Outlook. Type this inbox dash Google next. And I'm in my inbox from my Google email account. And I can easily move through my mail. Through my folded, expanded, folded, day, folded, the day, expanded. And it's expanded by date. Shared love and leadership, left bracket, leadership, right bracket, the your micro from your editor, lose, lose, slash 25, slash 20, 16, 9, 33, AM, 20, 80. Now, those who are not used to speech synthesis are saying, what did that say? <laughs> because in order to keep up with your ability to speed read through vision, we speed listen. This, to me, is slow. And to a college student who grew up with speech technology, what I listen to sounds slow to them. And what they're listening to sounds like gibberish to me. This is absolutely one of the ways that we can wade through so much information so quickly to keep up with our sighted colleagues. I'm down there, Ronnie. Joel's micro visual description program is up for visual business slash 25 slash 26 8 56 AM 38 KB. Now, in the same way that you can see a whole page and focus in on just one part, I'm not listening to all of what that just said. 
All I was interested in is who was it from, because I'm looking for a particular one. Stravkowski, chef, left, fair, net, CD, right, fair, meeple, and call it PSCD, line, left, and slash, left, attachment, Bruce Howell, webinar, planet, left, and slash, 24, slash, left, Bruce Howell, and, and, and he's talking to me about webinar planning. By the way, when it starts nattering too long, I hit the control key. It's the equivalent of the shut up key. <laughs> and it's one of the first things we teach our clients around here, is how, once you hear what you need to hear, to shut it up so it's not to be auditorily distracted by what follows. I'm pressing enter on that. Enter. Message for full Bruce Howell, subject, webinar, planet. I'm shutting it up. I'm going to the top of that page. Hello, Brian and Jackie Colin. Hello, Brian and Jackie Colin. Actually, it said Jack Quiz, because speech is imprecise, right? And with all those different languages that our names are in, you can mispronounce it. But we get past it. Land. Based on conversations this week, I have taken the first tab of coming up with a title description and sent it to the for the March 17th webinar. So I'm reading through my email. Any problem? None. All tab, inbox, dash, Google, all tab, the Carroll Center for the Blind Vertical Bar Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired, dash, Internet Explorer, the Carroll Center for... Now, I'm using Internet Explorer to browse a web page. Go to the top of that page. The Carroll Center for the Blind Vertical Bar Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And it tells me the title of the page. I can down arrow through that page. Navigation region. Same page link, skip the content. Navigation region end. List of three items. Now, you didn't hear it say navigation. It doesn't say navigation region up there on the screen. But my speech is not only telling me what's there, but why it matters. So if I wanted to drop down through headings, I'm going to hit the letter H. Services for the blank of visually impaired heading level two. And it told me that not only that was a heading, but a heading level two. The nature of laying out a web page, we have headings and subheadings and sub subheadings. I can navigate by that. Is there a list on this page? List of seven items. In fact, there is a list of seven items. This is link home. Home, Link about us. About us. List of 13 items missing level one. And in there, there's a sub list. Link about the Carroll Center. About the Carroll Center. And leadership. Leadership. Read our history. Read our history, etc. So I'm able to quickly navigate through this. I do not have to read web pages from upper left hand corner to lower right hand corner, everything in, in between, any more than a sighted person would. If it's properly set up, as Joe was describing earlier, then I can use a whole series of commands that I learned to navigate through this more rapidly. Alt tab, webinar planning dash message level tab, inbox dash Google Maps, alt tab, JAWS professional. Alt tab, Robert Morgan, 2015 training dash Excel. Please wait, Robert Morgan, 2015 training, Robert Morgan, 2015. Don't think for a moment that Excel scares me as much as it may scare some of you. <laughs> I use it on a regular basis, not only to look at financial information, but to look at forms that are being used to store data, such as this form that I have here. Again, to the top. First cell. And on the first cell, that would be cell A1. If I hit right arrow. Time, B1. Time, B1. Travel in, C1. Travel in. Train in, D1. Training. Travel out, D1. Travel out, oh pardon me, back Train right in, here. Travel in, C1. That's travel in. Train in, D1. Travel out, D1. That's travel out. Even I missed the, that there wasn't an IMG and there was mm. an IM there. So I can navigate through spreadsheets. Anybody who's trained how to use speech or braille or magnification as their means of accessing can use Excel. Now right here, I'm showing you how I can use Excel to read information provided to me in this format. I can easily, however, create these same spreadsheets and make them as visually appealing as is necessary. It all depends on the ability of the individual to get access to the training necessary to teach them those skills. All doable. Alt tab, the Carroll Center, Alt tab, webinar planning, dash message, left there, HTML, right, Alt tab, inbox, dash Google Maps, dash Alt tab, JAWS professional, Alt tab, ACP quarterly report under like 2016, dash word, ACP. And of course, we live for word. <laughs> now, when I first went to college, man, years ago, when I went to college to do a college paper, I would uh, lasso a fraternity brother, yes, I'm one of those boys, <laughs> a fraternity brother to take me to the library, and we would sit there and he'd pull books off shelves and we'd go through the card catalog, shutter, the old days, <laughs> and he would read to me and I would use a mechanical braille writer to braille down my notes, take them back to my room, roll my piece of paper into my manual typewriter, type away slow enough that if I made a mistake, I could remember to do the backspace, pull out a little piece of chalked paper, slide it in there, mm -hmm. type the same letter I shouldn't have typed in the first place, and continue on. So word for me, it's an amazing thing. Because for the first time in my life, I can edit my own work. Mm -hmm. And I can do it just as good as any sighted person could. 
by looking at it. I can understand its format when it's spelled wrong. And boy, if somebody knows how to spell something wrong, that's me. <laughs> All of those things I can do independently using speech, braille, or large print. And that's what we teach people here at the Carroll Center when it comes to these Windows-based computers. While I've been talking about this, understand that these screen readers like JAWS, the screen magnifiers like Zoom Text, the refreshable Braille displays like this Braille Edge 40, all can get the access to what's on the screen, the trickiest access on the screen in a way that works for the word, word process, the word process you're going to. Maybe at your place, you have some custom databases. Maybe at your place, you do a lot of things on the web using third-party products to do things. If you work at a bank, we've talked to a lot of banks here at the Carroll Center, uh, as we've taken a look at web accessibility, and find that a lot of banks outsource a major part of what looks to be on their, their website. So there are things like that that we need to make adjustments in our access technology to be able to access. Joey Hassan over there with the Mass Commission for the Blind will tell you that we can send an engineer to a place of employment and have them create what's called a script to get access to databases which out of the box with JAWS wouldn't work. We can write new methods for making the right things speak at the right time. We will also need to do some extra training of the blind person because they're not going to be using JAWS as it's out of the box but specialized custom keystrokes that will read the right places on the screen at the right time. But we have with us, through this partnership, the ability to find the blind persons with the basic skills, to give them those skills through training that they don't already have, and to engineer a solution to the technology they're expected to be able to use on the job. Not all of it is super expensive, in fact, most of it is not. Uh, and I can assure you, as a result of our involvement here at the Carroll Center and through the blindness community, that it's only getting better over time. I'm going to reach into this pocket. This is, this is part of my magician's act. <laughs> um, and I'm going to have a, a fairly inexpensive device. And I'm going to accidentally turn it off instead of on, so let's try that again. This is called a Victor Reader Stream. It uses an SD card to store information. And it's a number of things. I can, once it's finished booting up here, because I turned it off, like I said, I can, come on, finish booting. There we go. I can. This is a brief recording of an audio note to refer to later. Stop recording. I use this as a digital recorder. So if I want to quickly take a note off the phone, a phone call, this is under one hand at my desk. But it's also used to play back audio material. So if you think of an iPod as a playback device, this is a blind or visually impaired person's specialized iPod. Because not only can it play back audio material, but I can transfer onto it e-text files, whether they're Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, whatever. And I can place them onto that SD card, into this device, and synthetic speech will be able to read it to me. And I can put place markers in to refer back to useful information. A lot of times when somebody's looking for work, what gets in the way is the sighted person thinking, if I suddenly couldn't see, I couldn't do this job. Well, trust me, we're not coming to you after we were blinded five minutes ago. We've got the training to back up our regulatory, right? We've learned how to use these devices in a way that will compensate for us doing things in an audio format or a braille format or a large print format, such as taking and referring to notes. Useful, useful piece of equipment. Price tag on that, by the way, $350. Will the commission provide that to somebody who's going to be getting a job if they can only have access to this device, Joe? Yes. Down to. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling out of my pocket the device I started here with this afternoon, and that's my iPhone 6. The 6S is a few months off. 
Got to wait for that two-year cycle. So I use this device all day, every day. I'm going to unlock it with my thumb. And I'm going to... I'm going to uh, close the app. I was just teaching a young man who's on his way to college in the summer how to use this device to scan print documents. So I opened up a book, held the camera 12 inches off the page, double tapped the screen, and it took a picture and began reading the page aloud. So access to print is a matter of the right tool and the right training. So what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to make sure that I'm at my home screen. And messages. first thing you hear there is messages, by the way. Little easier? Okay. But again, that's at 36% of what this is capable of. And I know fifth graders. You know that show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yes. I know fifth graders who listen to things on this at 100%. So, nonetheless, messages. messages. Text messages a problem? No, fully accessible. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Anybody here on LinkedIn? Yes. yes. Fully accessible. Facebook. Facebook. One new item. One new item. <laughs> okay. Facebook. Fully accessible. Tweet list. Twitter. Anybody follow things on Twitter? Yep. Fully accessible. NFB Newsline. NFB Newsline. Another product. This gives me access not to the Globe, not to the Herald, but to 350 newspapers each morning. Before it lands on your front porch, it's in my iPhone. Voice stream. Voice stream. A product that will speak aloud documents from any of about 40 different formats, including PDF files, if they're not pictures and not truly words. Contacts. That's my contacts. Settings. My settings. App Store. 11 updates available. I still have 11 updates to catch up with on the App Store. <laughs> Uh, this is our to, do. our to do. It's my to do list. People work on lists in here. It's the only way I get through my day getting anything done. So bang away at the list and email. Dropbox. Dropbox. A lot of people in this room, I bet you use Dropbox. Great way to keep files. And that means I can sit down at the Windows computer, the Mac computer, the iPhone, have access to it all. KNSB Reader. That's the scanner I was talking about. KNSB Reader. Crier. I'm not sure what that is. Writer, that's a full-featured word processor on my iPhone. Blind Square. Blind Square, that's my GPS. Uh, and you really know when somebody's desperate when they roll down their window in their car and that's so blind person with a cane. Can you tell me where this is? <laughs> the fact of the matter is, who's more likely to know where they are? <laughs> than that one? Fantastic. Fantastic, that's my calendar. News. News. Uber. Uber. Oh, do I love Uber. <laughs> it, it's made a big difference in my life. YouTube. YouTube. I have learned so much from YouTube videos. This past couple of years, I've taught myself how to play the ukulele. Everybody's got to have a hobby. I have an Apple Watch. Um, I'm of the generation where you got up, you brush your teeth, you put your watch on. Today's generation, they pull out the iPhone and double tap on it. And today I had to do that because I walked out of the house without my Apple Watch. <laughs> Very annoying. I keep looking at my wrist for no good reason. Money reader. Money reader. Just to prove a point about not all apps are big, involved apps. Many of them are simple apps. I'm reaching into my pocket here. I do everything with audio description. And pulling out my wallet, pulling out a bill from my wallet, Now, I've got a bill in my hand. It is the same dimensions, same thickness, smells the same as a $1,000 bill. But I'm pretty convinced it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> so under those circumstances, how can I tell? In the United States, as a blind person, you can't. 
You have to have a device to do that for you. So I ran Link Identifier. I hold it up here. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. Money, money, money. Five dollars. Five dollars. So I have a way to read print money rather rapidly, don't you think? So there are hundreds of apps that I could run on that iPhone or an iPad or my Mac or my Windows system that will mitigate my inability to see something out there. We have color identifiers so that if you need to know that this tie goes with that shirt or that you're only supposed to share the red folders with managers, blue folders with anybody, all of those kinds of things that you think of being inherently visual, there are means around the vast majority of them. The means is a combination of those technologies and the training to learn to use them effectively. But we only can take advantage of those if we can find a way into the classroom and into the workplace. And I would hope that by the time I retire, I'll be able to say something else than 70% unemployment. And I hope that you help me make that happen. Thank you for your attention.